whether it be a character that's like Power from Chainsaw Man or Kamo or Choso from Jujutsu Kaisen, it's getting ridiculous how many characters actually have this power. And I mean, to be honest with you, I can understand why. What's up, hello and welcome. My name is Lou and I love to talk about superpowers. In today's video, we'll be discussing blood manipulation. So what is blood manipulation? Simply put, just like any other manipulation ability, blood manipulation allows its user to create, shape, and manipulate blood. With blood manipulation, users have the ability to create tendrils or weaponry such as hammers or bullets or swords or spears or cages even, or just the sky's the limit. They have the ability to create any kind of construct via their source. So anything you can think of, basically, you could probably do with blood. Simple as that. It also allows its users to do things like increase their strength, speed, stamina, and regenerative abilities. If my Jujutsu Kaisen fans are out there, you know what I mean. At more advanced levels, you have the ability to manipulate blood in other areas or near you. So think of like the blood of other people inside their bodies. Blood benders, basically, is how you have to think of this. You have the ability to manipulate the bodies or actions of others via control of the blood in their body. At the extreme end of this ability, actually, you can do things like cause people to blow up from the inside out, which, yikes, like, do you, I don't even know how to, like, respond to that. Like, could you imagine fighting somebody and they just make you blow up from the inside out? Like, your, your blood starts to blow and you just explode. Ooh. That, ugh, I'm not even afraid of blood, but that's just gross, man. That's terrifying. But just like any power we've talked about on this channel, it does have its limitations, and these are quite steep. First limitation we need to talk about is the fact that bloodlessness is a thing. You have a finite amount of blood in your body, and you can't do something as crazy as like, I don't know, like open up all this blood, like create a, a blood cannon. I don't think you can make a huge blood cannon and shoot a, a, a large like cannonball of blood, anything like that, because there's only so much blood in your body. Another thing you have to worry about is, depending on your level of skill and knowledge, distance, mass, and precision are highly affected by that. So think of it in the, in the case like, if you just got this power tomorrow, not knowing as much about like what your limitations are, what you can really press, you couldn't do anything as crazy as you know, a piercing blood, or you know a blood meteorite, or even something as crazy as like uh, spears, without prior not without some real knowledge and study into this. You also have to worry about something called thrombosis, which I learned for this video. I didn't even know that was a word that was a thing, which is blood clotting. The more you know, we learn in this channel. See, we learn, we learn new words. We're, we're educating each other. You have to worry about blood clotting and thrombosis, which is definitely gonna cause a lot of issues in combat if you're in a certain situation. I'm not gonna spoil, but if you know, you know. Something else we have to talk about is the fact that with this power, well, of course, you're gonna have to bleed, so. I don't know about you, but I don't just magically squirt blood out of my nose or just form blood out of thin air. I actually have to get a cut or an open wound to utilize or have blood flow from me. And I'm not gonna get into the other side of that. We're not gonna get that gross, but just saying, you have to actually cause yourself some kind of wound or some kind of like, like cut in order to utilize this power. Next up, we gotta talk about the fact that at the base level, you only can manipulate the blood within your body. You can't manipulate blood sources outside of that. Like you can manipulate your own blood, of course. Like let's say you have a Coke bottle full of your own blood, which would be scary. But if you had that, you could manipulate that, but you couldn't manipulate the blood of others with such limited knowledge and skill. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and give this ability to score. I break it down into five categories. That being versatility, creativity, destructive capacity, combat potential, and daily use. I go, I go through all these out of 10, give it a final letter grade at the end. Starting us off, we have versatility, and right off the jump, I gave it a seven out of 10. For me personally, I do feel like in a combat and medical sense, this is very versatile, especially from what I've seen. To be fair, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean I, I mean, I don't think it's like a 10, but I think it's a way more above average power, especially in those aspects. Like you couldn't obviously use it for everything or in every situation, but I mean, blood doping, you can make yourself stronger, faster, and increase your stamina. Obviously, sports, you just completely shatter that. Uh, combat, obviously, you just, you just like, molly up anybody in your way. Medical, like the amount of information that you can, you can provide, or the, the service you can provide in the medical field, like unquestioned. So yeah, seven out of 10 for versatility. Next up is creativity. I gave it another seven out of 10. 
I don't feel like it's a bad power. Like I, like I said, there's so many applications, combat, medical, and even sports related that you can utilize this for. And you can be pretty creative. The characters like Choso or Power or uh, Gutaro from Gutaro, Gutaro, not Gutaro, I don't know. Gutaro from uh, Demon Slayer, they've shown very heavy combat aspects of it. But like, even on a medical side, like just doing blood work or like just seeing things from like, seeing like abnormalities and helping out doctors and things like that, you would, I mean, it would be pretty beastly to have this. So yeah, I feel like it's, it's creative enough where I can confidently say it's a 7 out of 10. All right, next up is Destructive Capacity, DC. And I went ahead and gave it an 8 out of 10. So if you've seen season two of JJK or Jujutsu Kaisen, you already know how devastatingly busted and dangerous this power can be. Like, Choso alone, with the exception of like maybe one other character in that series during that whole season, I would say he did the most destruction Maybe two, maybe two other characters, but he's definitely in that top tier of destructive capacity. Like he was doing some absolutely insane things. And I feel like with this power, it can allow you to just do just gross, like absolutely insanity when it comes to like destroying things. Like you're not obviously nuking cities or, well, nah, you're not nuking cities or, you know, uh, changing ecosystems or anything like that, but you are doing quite a bit of like collateral damage and even to the point where you can manipulate other people's blood and causing them to blow up. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say it's an eight just to be on the safe side. I don't feel like it's a nine or a 10. Eight's right there where it needs to be. Next up, we got combat potential and dude, like every anime and manga I've seen in the last, I would say four to five years, the combat potential alone, because like, I mean, honestly, that's pretty much all it's been used for. Shonen is, you know, all about that action. So like, yeah, it's a 10 for me, personally, because that's the only aspect I've ever seen this power utilized in. I mean, you got uh, Avatar Last Airbender or Legend of Korra, even still, that's still combat potential. And characters like Power, Choso, Yutaro, uh, even characters from Blood Blockade, uh, Becca, knows, Becca was telling me about uh, characters from Black Clover. All combat aspects are just insanely high. So for me, I can't see it getting lower than 10. Like it's, the sky's a little bit of this. All right, final category of daily use. This is based on how often I've used this power in regards to like my life or just things I'm really involved in. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna have to get another 10. I know I always say this in every video. Like I would be so excited to have almost any superpower because I feel like with the right knowledge and the usage of it, any power can be so fun and so cool to have. And this power is no different because I do, this, this power is pretty dope. Like I keep bringing him up, but Choso made this power look so cool. And like, I don't even like fight that much. I do, I do kickboxing, of course, but like, even just to do like like blood work for labs or helping stop wounds or you know just increasing the amount of like stamina I have throughout the day, my strength, it'll help me help my lips, it'll help me out with just everything I do. I, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. So yeah, for me, daily use is a 10 out of 10. That brings the score to a 42 out of 50, which will be a B power. Now, I know I was hyping up towards the end, and granted, this is a pretty pretty badass power to be fair and yeah i feel like it's a really great power i'm not sure maybe maybe if you know a couple months go by and i settle on a little bit more it'd probably go a little higher but yeah i think b is perfect b for blood b for just good just a good power a good solid power all right so let's go ahead and jump to the best and worst users for me i always go worst is first in this video that's no different and for me the worst user is Gama from Yu Yu Hakusho. Now, I love Yu Yu Hakusho. I feel like they have some of the greatest characters and the greatest like powers of any shonen or any like sh series, really. But they did this dude so dirty. Like Gama's power is so lame. Like his his blood manipulation ability is to seal the spiritual energy or the energy of other characters via his his blood. But the only way that actually happens, the only way we seen it happen was via him dying. Yeah, I don't know. Like, 
Like, granted, his makeup ability is pretty cool because, like, you know, he mixes his blood with his, you know, his demon energy and whatnot, which is really cool, but, like, that's kind of it. And it was still not enough to stop Karama. Like, granted, Karama's a main character, but I just, I'm sorry, man. If you, if your best ability causes you to die or only activates when you die, and it's not even for, like, an infinite amount of time. His ability was, like, what, in real time, when the show was probably, like, five, maybe ten minutes tops. And then Karama uses power again. I'm sorry, dude. Like that's that's kind of that's kind of trash. That's kind of dog water to me personally. So yeah, to me, Gama from Yu Hawk Show, just the worst user in blood manipulation. It's it's not even a contest. All right, so that leaves us with our best user. Now I debated about this long and hard in my head. I debated about this for a little while. There's so many great characters with this power. So many great characters who have utilized it to the utmost. You got characters like Power, who I'm not even fully like done with Chainsaw Man. I have a bunch of the manga that a friend of mine let me borrow. I just started the season, or the first season again, because I just got busy with life. And she's pretty dope, but, ugh. oh my God. I feel like this entire video, I've been saying his name. I feel like, I got a crush on this dude already. Like, but to be fair, he had one of the coolest showings of all of 2023. Bar none. I don't care what anybody else says. But the best user is Choso. Come on, it's Choso. That bathroom scene alone between him and Yuji, or that subway scene for him, between him and Yuji alone, with all the things that he was doing, dude, he showcased everything awesome about Love Inflation. He did the blood doping, he did uh, bullets, he did lasers, he did swords, he did Wolverine claws. I know the internet keeps saying that, but it's true. He did Wolverine claws. Like, he was able to like, uh, cause the blood to use a shield on his body. He did so many cool things. I don't see anybody else matching his level when it comes to blood manipulation. But these are all just my opinions. If you feel differently about who you might think the best manipulator is or maybe the overall score, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I like the engagement you guys have been giving me here lately on the previous videos. Maybe it just means the world to me. And if you want to see more, there's more videos for you on the screen now. With that being said, thank you so very much again. I appreciate you. I love you all. And